Hey KO team and family, this is Mr. Thompson. Welcome to Wednesday's lesson. So for today, we're gonna to be talking about how individuals, events, and ideas influence one another in an informational text. Remember, an informational text is always gonna be nonfiction or real life. For today's assignment, you're gonna need two things. Access to Google Classroom, and either a smartphone, computer, or tablet to access your work. Key points for today's lesson. Today we're gonna to work on a lesson that focuses on analyzing the interaction between individuals, events, and ideas, and figure out how they influence one another in the text. One factor or set of influences may cause more than one effect. Analyzing the information interaction between individuals, events, and ideas will help you figure out how different individuals, ideas, and events influence and interact with one another in an informational text. Essential vocab for today's lesson. Now, say each word with me, I'm gonna repeat it once. We have individual, event, idea, indicate, and activated. An individual is a character in an informational text, usually the person who the text is generally about. Now today we're going to be reading two biographies, which are the life stories of two different characters written by somebody else. So in these biographies, we're going to really be able to focus on the individuals. Events are things that happen in the text. In fiction, in the stories we read, we call that, we call these plot plot points. Um, in an informational text, we're going to call them events. Um, ideas are notions or thoughts that the characters have. These often influence their actions. Indicate means to show or to point to, and activated means started, set off, or triggered. Okay, so we're going to start today by looking at an essential question. That question is, what people, events, and ideas led to Moybridge's plan to photograph a horse? We're going to be using this graphic organizer to help us track ideas, individuals, and events. Okay, so here is our text. I want you guys to do a first read along with me. So here we go. Do horses fly? Intelligent, well-educated people were still asking this question at the end of the 19th century. Although the age of believing in winged horses had long since passed, people still wondered if a horse ever lifted all four hooves off the ground at the same time. If someone could prove that a horse's hooves left the ground, then the answer would indicate that, yes, in a sense, horses do fly. Edward Moybridge, photographer and adventurer, put an end to years of speculation. Through the use of, new, of a new technology, photography, he laid the question to rest. In 1872, Moybridge was working as a photographer in San Francisco when Leland Stanford, former California governor, hired Moybridge to photograph his racehorse. Stanford wanted to know if all four hooves of a tr trotting horse actually leave the ground, even for an instant. Moybridge rapidly hatched a plan. Unfortunately, his early efforts were unsuccessful. So, while reading, I looked for people, events, and ideas, and I thought about their interactions. So, the ideas that, that was, the, the biggest idea that was most prevalent in this text was, can horses fly? The two individ individuals, characters, or people who the text talked about were Edward Moybridge and Leland Sanford. Edward Moybridge was a photographer. Leland Sanford was a California governor who also owned racehorses. The event was Sanford hired Moybridge to photograph his horses. Okay, paragraph one stated that people wondered for many years whether all four horses of a uh, horse hooves ever came off the ground. And paragraph two focused on whether Sanford wanted to know whether this was true or not. So here are the interactions I'm seeing. 
The idea of whether horses can fly led to Sanford hiring Moybridge. Moybridge, in turn, planned to use his knowledge of cameras to investigate this idea. So, we have the idea of can horses fly that influenced Edward Moybridge and Leland Sanford to investigate the idea and that influenced Moybridge to photograph Sanford's horses. So what I want you guys to really see is the, the connection between the idea, the individuals, and the event. Okay, now it's time to write. So we were to answer this question, what people, events, and ideas led to Moybridge's plan to photograph a horse? Here is my model response. Many people, ideas, and events influence Moybridge's plan. The question of whether horses fly is what leads to subsequent events. Stanford asked Moybridge to photograph the horse because he wants to answer the question. This event causes Moybridge to figure out a plan to capture the horse's movements. Now, let's do a quick check for understanding. Okay, which sentence from the text best explains why the evidence provided by Moybridge changed the public's thinking about horses? Okay, so I've got four pieces of direct evidence from the text. I have to figure out which one of these explains why the evidence provided by Moy Moybridge changed the public's thinking about horses, okay? So what I want you guys to do is independently read the next two paragraphs from the text. Then you're gonna answer this CFU question. So what I want you to do is pause the video right now, read the two next paragraphs, answer the question. When you're done, unpause, I'm going to go over the answer. All right, so here is the answer to the problem. Did you get it right by annotating and using close reading skills? If you didn't, press pause and try again. Okay. So now I'm gonna review why this is the right answer. So choice A is incorrect. It states what Moybridge set out to explore. Choice B is incorrect. It describes Moybridge's plan, not the results of his effort. Choice C is correct. It describes the proof Moybridge got from his high-speed photographs of the horse. These results then influence the world the world's thought about horses, motion, and photography. Choice D is also incorrect. It describes what happened as a result of Moybridge's success with his phot photographs. Remember, all choices are sentences from the text. The question asks which one best describes how Moy Moybridge's photos provided proof about how horses lift all their hooves when they trot. You should have eliminated any choices that did not describe how a horse moves. All right, so for your guided practice today, what I want you guys to do is read the next excerpt in your document. This excerpt focuses on Eli Whitney. Eli Whitney was a famous inventor. He invented the cotton gin, which revolutionized the economy of the American South, okay? So what I want you to do is read through this biography, okay, which is a life story written by another person and then I want you to answer the two S back aligned questions in your document. After that, you've got a little bit of writing to do, okay? Then you're going to submit the document. Now, remember, before you get started with the guided practice, um, it's really important to think about how individuals, events, and ideas all to come together and influence each other in an informational text. One set of factors can have more than one effect in these relationships, okay? And analyzing these, in, these relationships in an informational text is going to help us better understand what we're reading. So, I hope this lesson was, was effective. Um, 
I hope you guys are do all doing well. And I will see you again on Friday for another great lesson. Thank you.